Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Bud to Blossom podcast. We are a raw, raw podcast, <laughs> so it's just going to be me doing intros and outros as of right now. Um, my name is Serena. I am your fairy godmother, <laughs> but in all seriousness, I specialize in work with HSPs and empaths. I am an alignment specialist and I am going to be speaking a little bit today about how we chose the name Bud to Blossom. So if you've read our um, bio on Spotify um, or Anchor, you'll see that we talk a lot about the flower and the lessons learned by flat the flower and beauty and really what that means for us um, as people and lessons in life and enlightenment. And so I want to share with you guys a passage today actually from Eckhart Tolle's book, A New Earth. Um, and this is literally just right in the beginning of um, the book. And he talks about um, chapter one is called the flowering of human consciousness and so he talks about exactly this the flower and the purpose of the flower and what that means for us as humans in our evolution and so this podcast um, you know Eckhart Tolle really says it best everything that I wanted this podcast to be about and this name to be about um, he really does um, sum up here so might as well use somebody else's wisdom right all right, so here we go. The flowering of human consciousness. Earth, 114 million years ago, one morning just after sunrise. The first flower ever to appear on the planet opens up to receive the rays of the sun. Prior to this monumentous event that heralds an evolutionary transformation in the life of plants, the planet had already been covered in vegetation for millions of years. The first flower probably did not survive for long, and flowers must have remained rare and isolated phenomenon. Since conditions were most likely not yet favorable for a widespread flowering to occur. One day, however, a critical threshold was reached, and suddenly there would have been an explosion of color and scent all over the planet if a perceiving consciousness had been there to witness it. Much later, those delicate and fragrant beings we call flowers would come to play an essential part in the evolution of consciousness of another species. Humans would increasingly be drawn to and fascinated by them. As the consciousness of human beings developed, flowers were most likely the first thing they came to value that had no utilitarian purpose for them. That is to say, was not linked in some way to survival. They provided inspiration to countless artists, poets, and mystics. Jesus tells us to contemplate the flower and learn from them on how to live. The Buddha is said to have given a silent sermon, once during which he held up a flower and gazed at it. After a while, one of those present monks, called Mahakasapa, began to smile. He is said to have been the only one who understood the sermon. According to legend, that smile, that is to say, realization, was handed down by 28 successive masters and much later became the origin of Zen. Seeing beauty in a flower could awaken humans, however briefly, to the beauty that is essential part of their own innermost being, their true nature. The first recognition of beauty was one of the most significant events in the evolution of human consciousness. The feelings of joy and love are intrinsically connected to that recognition. Without fully realizing it, flowers would become for us an expression in the form of that which is most high most sacred and ultimately formless within ourselves. Flowers, more fleeting, more, eth more ethereal, and more delicate than the plants of out of which they emerged, would become like messengers from another realm, like a bridge between the world of physical forms and the formless. They do not only hold a scent that was delicate and pleasing to humans, but also brought a fragrance from the realm of spirit. Using the word enlightenment in a wider sense than the conventionally accepted one, we could look upon the flowers as the enlightenment of plants. Any life form in any realm, mineral, vegetable, animal, or human, can be said to undergo enlightenment. It is, however, an extremely rare occurrence since it is more than an evolutionary progression. It also implies a discontinuity in its development. 
a leap into an entirely different level of being, and most important, a lessening of materiality. What could be heavier and more impenetrable than a rock, the densest of all forms? And yet, some rocks undergo a change in their molecular structure, turn into crystals, and so become transparent to light. Some carbons, inconceivable heat and pressure, turn into diamonds, and some heavy minerals into other precious stones. Most crawling reptilians, the most earthbound of all creatures, have remained unchanged for millions of years. Some, however, grew feathers and wings and turned into birds, thus defying the force of gravity that held them for so long. They didn't become better at crawling or walking, but transcended crawling and walking entirely. Some time immemorial flowers, crystals, precious stones, and birds have held the special significance for human spirit. Like all life forms, they are, of course, temporary manifestations of the underlying one life, one consciousness. Their special significance and the reason why humans feel such fascin fascination for and affinity with them can be attributed to the ethereal quality. Once there is a certain degree of presence, of still and alert attention in human beings' perceptions, they can sense the divine life essence, the one indwelling consciousness for spirit in every creature, every life form, recognize it as one within their own essence, and so love it as themselves. Until this happens, however, most humans see only the outer forms, unaware of the inner essence, just as they are unaware of their own essence and identify only with their own physical and psychological form. In the case of a flower, a crystal, a precious stone, or a bird, however, even someone with little or no presence can occasionally sense that there is more there than the mere physical existence of that form. Without knowing this is the reason that why without knowing that this is the reason why he or she is drawn toward it, feels an affinity with it, because it, of its ethereal nature. Its form obscures the indwelling spirit to a lesser degree than is the case with other life forms. This exception are all newborn life forms, babies, puppies, kittens, lambs, and so on. They are fragile delicate, not yet fully established in their materiality. The innocence, the sweetness and beauty that are not of this world still shine through them. They delight even the relatively insensitive humans. So when you are alert and contemplate a flower, crystal, or bird without naming it mentally, it becomes a window for you into the formless. There is an inner opening, however slight, into the realm of spirit. This is why these three enlightened life forms have played such an important part in the evolution of human consciousness. Since ancient times, why? Why, for example, the jewel in the lotus flower is a central symbol of Buddhism, and a white bird, the dove, signifies the Holy Spirit in Christianity. They have been preparing the ground for more profound shift in planetary consciousness that is destined to take place in human species. This is a spiritual awakening that we begin to witness now. So, you know, Eckhart Tolle, really, he says it best. The flower is a symbol of enlightenment, you know, of this beautiful, beautiful, formless thing taking shape. It's lighter and more delicate and more subtle and more fragile than the plant in which it comes out of, right? So this idea for us here um, as bud to blossom is, you know, that we start out and within us, you know, within our very being are the seeds that will once become or soon become a flower. You know, we have the seeds of our own enlightenment within us and it's just through our growth and our evolution that that will come to blossom. And I think it's such a beautiful way to describe, you know, the human evolution and also the way that we connect to beauty. You know, beauty can bring in true enlightenment. And I don't mean beauty in the way of, you know, like physical beauty, because that's exactly what Eckhart is talking about as well. You know, it this is a type of beauty that reflects back to you your own 
eternal essence it's it's beyond form and that's really what true beauty to me is it's beyond form it's not actually what we're seeing on the outside it's that we're able to see from the outside through to this beautiful formless essence and when we see beauty out in the world you know in nature most of the time is when I experience this, is when we're out in the world and we see this beauty and we're in nature and we're contemplating it, we feel our own internal divine essence, you know, and it's really truly being reflected back to us. Every time we feel gratitude, every time we see beauty, every time we feel love, you know, all of these beautiful um, formless qualities is really our own formless quality being reflected back to us. And I think that that's such an amazing way, um, you know, really to experience life. So there you have it, guys. That was our episode for today. I want to thank Eckhart Tolle for <laughs> being able to describe um, this beautiful, beautiful way about nature and the earth and enlightenment and how that really is a f reflection of our own journey i think it's absolutely incredible and so with that being said thank you so much for listening to another episode of bud to blossom if you enjoyed this episode please subscribe to us follow us like us all the things and we will see you next time thank you so much for joining Big love, Serena.